do business, but they have to do business in terms of taxes in some way. And the government, of course, uh, is, is going to have a need for that as well. So when we, we want to have these transactions happen, but notice what, what happens often is that what will limit a transaction is if there's no trust. If the investor wants to invest in the company, but they don't know if the company is going to be pro profitable, then the investor doesn't, doesn't know if they're going to put the money in there. If the banks don't think that the company will be able to pay back the loan plus the interest, which is the way they're, why they're giving the loan in the first place, then they're less likely to give the loan. So what can the company do to give more trust? Well, the investors, the bank, the government are going to ask for, of course, financial statements. They're going to say, hey, why don't you give us some financial statements? Tell us what your profitability is. Tell us how you're doing. And then we're more likely to give you uh, what, we, what we want. We can do business then. The investors can then put in money and invest. The banks can give the loan. The government can uh, process their taxes. And But still, we still might have a problem because the, the investors, the users might be saying, hey, the company has an incentive to maybe not uh, provide financial statements that are correct or they might provide financial statements that are not correct in terms of what the end users are thinking in terms of the procedures or how it was created was it uh, made in accordance to some standards there could be errors on it so the end users still may not fully trust the financial statements and that's of course where uh, the cpa firm comes in with the audit and the audit then should give some level of assurance that the financial statements which are created and the responsibility of the company are correct in accordance with some agreed upon standards. So that's going to be the idea. The financial statements are then go to the CPA firm, which then could go to the end users with some more type of verification as to the reliability of the uh, financial statements in some way. Now, of course, there's pros and cons to this type of transaction because that CPA firm, that trust, that added trust is the benefit. That's hopefully going to say, okay, now we can have more transactions happening because there's more transparency. The end users are more confident in what the company is providing and therefore that's going to facilitate more transactions. That's huge. We want to have openness and, and transparency in order to have more transactions. Of course, the, the downside of that is that it, it's going to cost more money in order to do this. In order to have the CPA firm go in, if you're talking about audits of publicly traded companies, that's a lot of money to, to process those audits. So there's a, there's a pro and, and a con of that, but the idea of it is to facilitate the transactions, to provide the trust needed for people to do business, and that's going to be the concept of the audits. So why would we trust the audit, you might ask? What, you know, what is it about an audit that makes, makes the audit process a more trustworthy process? Well, these, the idea of independence and a, and a third party, an independent third party, is a key component of why we would trust an audit. For example, if we have the company and the end users, they're doing business, they want to do business, A and B are doing business, C over here is not involved in the immediate transaction between A and B. So if we were, if we were to do business, if you had two people doing business and you had a third party, possibly someone who's a friend of both of you or someone that both of you do not even know, then you might say, hey, this, this person has no uh, relation to the